So great, welcome everyone to this uh, today's session of the future of travel, creative cities. Um, I'm here today uh, working of course with Civil Eden India Business Council. My name is Cecilia Oldner. This is a collaboration between um, Sweden India Business Council and Visit Sweden. We also have a media partner which is uh, Economic Tri Times Travel World, and we're very proud to have them on board this time. Uh, I would like to welcome, first and foremost, you all listeners, and then, of course, also all the amazing uh, speakers and panelists that we have with us here today. So with no further delay, uh, Sanju Malutra. Yes, hi. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't uh, want to delay this any further. Uh, without saying that uh, this is a great opportunity for us to be online today at our second uh, webinar of um, the future of travel creative cities. Um, for you who don't know, uh, of course, Sweden India Business Council is a network between Sweden and India, one of the strongest uh, country to country networks. And we also have with us um, a partner, Visit Sweden. So this uh, was first um, um, a webinar that we did in uh, uh, June, when we spoke about what was happening then in the world, uh, when we're looking forward to travel and we're looking forward to various activities around the world. And what we came as a conclusion were that there were still things happening in Sweden. It was a safe environment, uh, Stockholm as well. And now when we're following up on this, we want to further discuss uh, why a uh, future of travel is something that is so close to us and why Sweden is, is ahead of the game. I know many are listening in from, from India. And, uh, and then of course in India, there is so much I think we could learn from what's happening in Sweden. So today we're gonna to talk about what's happening in Sweden. And we're also gonna talk about the activities that are happening around the world with all these amazing um, panelists that we have on board. I'm just gonna quickly check with the panelists. Is everyone seeing and everyone is online and there is no problems from anyone's sides, including seeing, seeing me? No problem. Um, um, so we, uh, as I mentioned, Sweden and the Business Council work with very many different uh, partners, but Visit Sweden is a close um, partner of ours. And um, here today, we have, of course, Sandy Malotra, who I just quickly briefed and mentioned about. He is the uh, country project manager for um, India uh, for Visit Sweden. And uh, he has actually lived in Sweden since 1996. Uh, Sandy um, is a dear friend, but I think what's going to be very interesting for us to hear more about is what he has done in Sweden with Visit Sweden with India Unlimited. Um, and with all the activities that he's done since again, moving here in 1996 and why he feels that Sweden and Stockholm is such an open um, environment and where creativity blooms and why it's a very much a destination for the future of travel. We also have with us today, Vandana Tivari. Vandana Tivari and I met when she was the uh, fashion director for Vogue India. We met at a fashion show and I think this was in 2000, well, at least 15 years ago. It was a long time ago in India. Uh, she's today, um, of course, a, a very well-renowned journalist writing for publications around the world. She's a sustain sustainability activist. And, and Bandana, um, who was recently the editor at large um, uh, for Vogue India, is today uh, joining us from Bali. So very excited to have her uh, with us today. We also have uh, Philippa Staffas. Philippa Staffas is the creative director for Stockholm Culture uh, Festival, and she's been working with them for eight years. Uh, she, three years ago, was involved in Stockholm Culture Festival having an uh, India theme. So it was an all India theme. And I know also Sandy was very much uh, involved in this. So she's gonna tell us more about what Stockholm Culture Festival is doing and the challenges that they're having and looking very much forward to that too. She's sitting here in Stockholm, but not in the same place as mine. I'm actually also in Stockholm for you who didn't know that, even though I very much live in India. Uh, we also have with us today, Michael Lindo. Uh, Michael Lindo is the co-founder of Tripodo. Tripodo um, has about 30 million uh, uh, subscribers and about 9 million active users. And their numbers have, actually increased over this time. One would have thought maybe people traveling less, that people will have less travel content, but the time to dream 
um, hasn't been bigger and the time to also create changes and inspirations for the future hasn't been bigger either. So we're very excited to have Michael on, online today who's gonna to tell us more about what's happening there, what people are dreaming about, what's the future. And it's also gonna tell us about the campaign that is running that is very exciting. With no further delay, um, I wanted to, uh, for this first um, SWC Connects Future Travel Creative Cities um, for this season, um, invite Sanju Malutra to tell us more about Stockholm, about Sweden and show us some, some inspiring uh, slides and pictures from, from where you could be now or where you can travel uh, in the future. Thank you, Cecilia. Um, hi, everyone. I also do a namaste to all my friends in India. And uh, I'll start sharing the screen so, as, so that we can uh, just let me know if you can see my screen. Yes? Yes. OK, great. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, so uh, thanks, Cecilia. I've been in, in Sweden now for almost 25 years, and uh, Stockholm is my city. I'm a Stockholmer. Uh, I think it's a fantastic city because it's, you know, it's nature is only five minutes away. Either we are covered by water, which is close by, or there's a forest, or there's beautiful greenery around. But before I talk about Stockholm, uh, this year we did a, a particularly interesting Nordic study in India. This was just before March. And uh, what was really interesting mm -hmm. to, to understand from that study that the positioning for Sweden in India is very much connected with uh, uh, that Sweden is concerned about the environment and sustainable tourism and uh, is considered to be one of those destinations. Uh, so I thought it's really good that we can actually talk about sustainable experiences. Uh, since the theme is very much on creative cities, and uh, here you see a picture of Stockholm. You know, it's a, it's a city that's surrounded by water built on seven islands. And just next to Stockholm is 30,000 islands in the beautiful archipelago. So you can imagine that access to nature is, is amazing, but it's also a city which is bubbling with creativity. Uh, we have a huge number. It's also one of the tech capitals of Europe. And uh, because of that, you know, it attracts talent from all around the world, not, of course, also from mm -hmm. India. I think we have about 25,000 Indians now living in, in Sweden. So this is really like a melting pot. And this, I think this kind of, uh, closeness uh, to nature. It's Swedes also have a very special relationship to nature, which I think is part of the creative process for the people and also to think sustainable. Um, so traveling and transportation, it's something which is accessible for all uh, and it's easily, and this is sustainable transport, you know, which you have in Stockholm. It's warm in the winters, it's easy to travel, whether it's in our buses or in the, in the, in the tube. Um, but of course, biking is, is today what everybody is doing. It's one of the most sustainable forms of uh, transportation. And here we start our morning in Stockholm with um, a visit to the old town. And we keep biking up to Rosendal, uh, which is a beautiful spot. Uh, in, in Stockholm where everything they grow is organic and biodynamic. It's one of the oldest farms in Stockholm. And they have this beautiful cafe for you to experience this organic and biodynamic food, uh, which is enjoyed by everybody who comes there, including these two dads, uh, which is very much part of the culture here in Sweden, not to be surprised. Uh, we have uh, to be able to see that. You continue biking and, and through beside these beautiful canals. And uh, why not visit Vasa Museum and see this beautiful ship that just sank outside Stockholm in, around 1600. What's interesting for you to know is <clears throat> if you want to hear the uh, guide, tell uh, there is a digital guide for you. And it's also available in Hindi for our um, Indian guests visiting. Uh, this is just you know, outside Kongsregården, you know, uh, you keep biking or walking around Strandvägen 
and uh, why not visit the beautiful Ostamams Harlan? It's a it's a fantastic food market, and look at the beautiful local produce, uh, organic produce in Stockholm. Uh, step into one of the bars close by for a drink before you head out for dinner to Rutabaga. It's a Michelin star vegetarian restaurant. Um, and uh, I think it's great that vegetarianism has really come into Sweden, which is also part of looking at it from a sustainable point of view. Um, the 5% of Swedes have, have now become vegetarian as against 30% Indians which might be interesting for you to know. Uh, and go back to your, your hotel at Ethem, uh, relax in a cozy atmosphere before you get up in the morning and you go out jogging and you do plogging. As you know, uh, plogging is something that has been very much a Swedish concept. So you keep your environmental clean and at the same time take care of your exercise and, and body. Or why not use one of the outdoor gyms in Stockholm? So Stockholm City has built these beautiful gyms. All this is made of wood and you can do it outside, which is both safe. And at the same time, it's really good that it's accessible and available for everybody in the city to do. So you don't have to go to just to an expensive gym to work out. Or if you want, you can also go to a nice spa to relax in the morning. Here we have you, Bandana. I picked, found this picture from your visit in 2014. And uh, I thought this was a good space to show it. Uh, Bandana came here in, in 2014 when we did this event called India Unlimited. And uh, she was here. She presented this beautiful collection, uh, a project for Vogue that she had put together. And I think Stockholm and Sweden was in awe after your visit, Bandana. Uh, so why not? Uh, and shopping, we, we want to talk about shopping. This is actually vintage is huge in Stockholm. So if you're coming here, I would really highly recommend vintage and secondhand shop. Uh, this is a secondhand boutique, which is highly popular. You get really good stuff. And I think it's one way for us to think of the future of shopping also, um, or, or go to one of the big brands and a lot of them are now doing, you know, uh, this is with acne. They have this recycled um, and upcycled clothes. So I think this is a kind of an interesting concept when you're looking into fashion. Of course, after all that shopping and you're really missing your Indian food, we have 150 Indian restaurants in Stockholm for you to try out, including a Sarvana Bhavan is available, you know, for the hardcore vegetarians. If you're in, it's the winter time, why not go out... Um, ice skating uh, and behind that you see on the left hand side is the city hall that's where the nobel prize the dinner is given uh, after the nobel prize uh, or why don't you try the green kayak which is very much similar to plogging but you do it in the water you collect you help to collect the garbage and for that you can rent the kayak for free i think that's a fantastic uh, sustainable experience but hey, you know, uh, in the summertime, it's so easy. Anywhere in Stockholm, you can just jump into the water. And that's part of also like the city and, and um, the inhabitants can enjoy the nature and what it has to offer. By the way, our water in Sweden and Stockholm is extremely clean. It's drinkable and we drink our tap water and the air is so fresh. So, you know, uh, that's something also to talk about. Why not go down for a sundowner then to Mala Pavilion? Uh, here, uh, it's a, a fantastic uh, gay bar and restaurant by the water, but they say we are straight friendly. And I think that's such a great attitude since uh, the LGBTQ community in Sweden is so integrated and uh, it's not about uh, segregation, it's the other way around. Uh, what's interesting about this, and we're talking about social sustainability, is that Mela Pavilion, this restaurant actually... Uh, uh, employs people who are uh, LGBTQ refugees. I think that's kind of circular and, and really great. And in the evening, if you're lucky and you happen to be here during the Stockholm Culture Festival, in the future, Philippa, this three years back, it was the theme was India and uh, 650,000 people in Stockholm were in awe of India. And Philippa, I'll let you tell a little bit about that experience uh, with Papa CJ and Zakir Hussein so on um you get up in the morning 
and you go for a walk. We have about 100 different paths, which can be about 20 kilometers each. Beautiful walks. They take you to these, a beautiful cafe like this called Lira, which is about 150 years old. Um, used to be a, a hangout for uh, Selma, who was one of the uh, first um, Nobel, women uh, Nobel Prize uh, winners for literature. And then take out a boat and go to the beautiful archipelago, visit archipelago on the way. And this is what it is. The 30,000 islands with some of them are small, some of them are big, with beautiful cabins and beautiful places to live in. Um, and what you do there? Well, you can fish, you can collect mushrooms that you can um, forage for yourself, berries, mushrooms, uh, make beautiful dinners outside and stay in one of these sustainable cabins. This is the Nolla cabin um, out in the Stockholm archipelago uh, or glamping as you would like to call it. And uh, wake up to this beautiful scene every morning uh, and just repeat it. Uh, we just did a campaign uh, called 72 Hours in Nature, where we know that it's proven that 72 hours in a Swedish nature helps to reduce your stress by 60 to 70 percent. And uh, it's no wonder that Swedes have this beautiful creative force, because every summer that's what Swedes do, actually. Um, yeah, that was a little bit for me. I put this picture up from the center of Stockholm because now we, our Christmas lights are coming up and I thought that would be a good way to uh, shortly end my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Sunny. This was uh, such an inspiring uh, presentation. And for me, sitting in Stockholm, it uh, gave me more ideas on what I want to do. And I can imagine for a lot of people now uh, tuning in from India, uh, they're really looking forward to come to Stockholm and to Sweden. Uh, but I also um, want to stress on the fact that, that even in India, there are so much that can be done in these different spaces. Um, I hope that people listening in today will also get inspiration on, on ideas from what we do here in Sweden, in Stockholm, that can be replicated in India. Uh, because the future of travel also means that we shouldn't be traveling too far away, at least mm -hmm. not that often. And if we do travel, we should travel possibly for a longer period of time and see more. Um, I'm going to come back to, to, to you, Sanju, uh, with a few more questions in regards to what we also do in Sweden in terms of being uh, responsible uh, sure. in approach on, on having more visitors and how we go about that. Um, but on that particular topic, I wanted you, um, Bandana, who very much is a sustainability activist. Um, of course, I, I can't wait to have you also being a dear friend in Stockholm and explore all these you know, beautiful places together. Uh, but, but a little bit um, of a thought from you would be great, uh, coming to think about also the offset of the carbon footprint moving forward and traveling. So in your role as a sustainability activist, Bandana, uh, please share some, some uh, thoughts, food, food for thoughts. Sure. Thank you so much. I feel like the light has suddenly dwindled in Bali and I'm <laughs> receding in the darkness. But first of all, thank you for this incredible opportunity. I am a Stockholm fan. I've been there pretty much for the last five years, almost every year. And um, it is fascinating to see what a city can do to its people, to the environment, and create an, an era of camaraderie and respect for people, creativity, and the environment. And Sweden is at the top of its game as being a forward-thinking thought leader in this area. Um, you know, I'm a fashion uh, sustainability activist, but the one thing I realized really early on is whether we talk about clothes or sustainable foods or organic farming or uh, sustainable tourism, they're all interrelated because it always involves human beings like you and me. We are not bifurcated. We are uh, singular beings that do multiple things. So when we travel now to different places, uh, of course, whether it's Sweden that looks after uh, the sustainability principles in a way a lot of other countries don't, maybe there's a lot to be learned from there. 
And I think as travelers of tomorrow going into creative cities like Stockholm, it's imperative that we sort of figure out how are we going to offset our carbon footprint, our travel carbon footprint, when we have to come continents away to participate in a different culture, which of course we want to do and we should. And I think this is where ingenuity is going to come into the tourism business, into the hospitality business. Because if I'm going to stay in a hotel, I hope the hotel is going to be a provider of my carbon offsetting. And I'll give you an example living in Bali. And as I talk, I'm going to move to my kitchen where there is a little bit more light because I really feel I'm in the dark. Um, in Bali, there is a hotel that was built by Rem Koolhaas was about to launch, but of course COVID happened. And the carbon footprint offsetting happened with a project called A Thousand Bamboo Villages, where this initiative has taken over almost 30, 40 million hectares of degraded land. And they're building an ecosystem of bamboo forestry that supports people and the environment, gives them work, product knowledge, business sense, all of it. And I, as a traveler who's staying in the hotel, can contribute money that will go into um, the bamboo forest, which then in turn um, sort of compensates for my travel carbon footprint. So I think these are exciting times and something like carbon footprint, which was so not into in our consciousness for so long when we traveled now is going to be crucial. Otherwise, we know how dysfunctional systems have been, have been. We are not going to travel as much, but when we do travel, we are mm. going to be more compassionate, more conscious of giving back and understanding that I need to lessen my own personal carbon footprint. So that's what I really look forward to in mm. hospitality, tourism, travel, and creative cities of the world. And I think Sweden is on top of its game. Great. Well, that's uh, that's very valuable thoughts and words that you shared, as always, Bandana. Um, I would like to, though, uh, take this forward, and I'm going to come back to you, Bandana, later with a few questions. And I also wanted to highlight that uh, the audience can also ask questions to these prominent speakers. So uh, do put them on the chat, and we shall try to uh, answer as many as possible at the end of the session. Um, I'm going to move on to uh, Delhi and to, to, to India, uh, where I want to talk a little bit with you, Michael. I mentioned earlier that you're the co-founder of Tripodo, which is an app that I'm using. I've myself seen so much more content coming in on this app. And it, I'm a little bit domesticized because we're uh, in a world where people are not traveling as much, but people are dreaming more than ever. And there are more content coming on the, the platform. So it'd be interesting just to hear a little bit from you. Um, what are people talking about? What, what, what's, uh, what are people looking forward to doing? And on that note, I know that you decided to do a campaign around Sweden um, and, and this would visit Sweden. Um, you also have an important role to play, even if you're not necessarily the content creator, but your audiences, but you are very much an influencer um, being Tripodo with 600,000 um, you know, followers on an Instagram, I mentioned 30 million plus uh, subscribers and 9 million users last month, which was a record. Please tell us a little bit more about this, Michael. Hi, everyone. First of all, thank you for having me here. Uh, so given that people have been scooped up indoors for a long, long time, I think uh, a lot of them just now want to reconnect with nature and that explains a lot of the dreaming that's happening uh, in terms of travel. Uh, luckily, so we've seen at least in from the dreaming phase happen in June, July, August, but now we see a lot of people actually going out and traveling on short uh, getaways and even work uh, doing vacations where people are going to hill stations and going to offbeat destinations with a good Wi-Fi connection and working uh, from these remote locations. Uh, we've seen, in fact, a surge in bookings for villas, for resorts in a number of hill stations across India. So domestic travel has actually picked up uh, uh, in the last few months for us and uh, in India, at least. We've seen a surge in queries for outdoor travel, uh, a lot of people now want to visit national parks, 
And obviously, there's a lot of questions around safety and precautions to be taken for, uh, for COVID-19. Uh, I think people now understand that they need to, uh, I mean, you can't really stop travel uh, for an extended period of time. People want to travel and that lust for travel is already there. So they're either people looking to travel in the near future or people actually getting out uh, and uh, to cities or to destinations close to their home cities. Uh, and that brings me uh, to our campaign with uh, Visit Sweden. And uh, our objective was how do we tie in, how do we inspire Tripoto members to get Sweden in their bucket list once travel opens up? And at the same time, uh, same point in time, insp uh, play to Sweden's strengths. Uh, a majority, a large segment of our user base is actually Gen Z and millennials. And this generation said to become the largest consumer class uh, so we have to stay focused on them if you need to be relevant as a business. Uh, the, this generation is more conscious of their carbon footprint, uh, like Banna spoke about, and the impact that their actions have on traveling, uh, what impact do they have on the environment, on the local communities. So responsible and sustainable travel is, beca is becoming a very important uh, subject for a large segment of our audience now. Uh, number two is a lot of them bond over very specific, authentic experiences and beliefs. They also have a greater wanderlust. They want to try new things. We've seen a rise in micro communities. Uh, and hence, we th what we wanted to do was, we wanted to center our communication around the fact that Sweden is so close to nature. Sanju just mentioned that you're just five minutes away from uh, nature in Sweden. Uh, we wanted to focus on the rejuvenating experiences that Sweden has to offer from glamping by the sea, from floating saunas, from barbecues in the forests, uh, cycling around the green parks, like uh, Sanju just shown those images to us. Uh, so that was how we built a communication. We wanted people, at, at least uh, the, our Gen Z and millennials uh, audience set in our community to uh, create a bucket list of places that they wanted to go to in Sweden. Uh, they would be they more attracted by unique cultural, adventurous, and immersive experience. And that's what our communication was all about. In fact, uh, since our launch about less than a week ago, we've had more, close to mil we've reached out to close to a million people around India uh, through our videos and through our social media posts. And that just shows that people are uh, right now uh, want to get out and there's some people, like I said, who have managed to get out and go to uh, hill stations and to uh, national parks around India, but there are a lot of them who still can't. And for those people, I think uh, having this sort of communication, this sort of content plays an important role. And having said that, like you rightly said, we don't create the content, a large 99% of our content is user generated. 1% is created by us, uh, like we do for some of our partners. So it's important for us to communicate on a daily basis, in fact, on why responsible and sustainable travel is important. And it's not just a question of why is it important, but what do we do? What actions do we take to ensure that uh, we travel responsibly and sustainably? For example, even uh, we've had a lot of people take, uh, do, do have uh, trekking trips and uh, been glamping and camping around the different hill stations in India right now. But every day there's a communication that goes out at the end of every uh, content piece that's published on Tripoto of what they need to do while they're traveling, whether it's making sure that they pick up the garbage that uh, and having a sack where they can uh, put, take the garbage that they take along with them on the trips and bring it back home, not using plastic bottles. So that communication is important because a lot of people might want to travel responsibly, but they might not know how to. So that's a role that we play as uh, a community uh, to ensure that they travel responsibly. That's fantastic. And, and it really shows, uh, I'm, I'm personally uh, very, very um, excited about this campaign because um, you show now for a million people the opportunities that are of course to, to travel and to do activities in Sweden and in Stockholm and what we do here. And sustainability is very much in our DNA in Sweden. So if we can also inspire until uh, Indians come to, to Sweden, what they can do in India, uh, then we come a very long way. 
Um, I also uh, thought it was very uh, encouraging to hear that you have more people traveling in India now again visiting the national parks, uh, etc. Because I know there was a big problem around the world where people were not, you know, visiting. Of course, everything was shut uh, for a longer period of time. So there was a lot of problems in zoos and national parks where where, you know, for, for, for anyone from the, of course, the employees to the animals, to everyone is surrounded. So it's so important also to support the local um, activities, hospitality, um, and, and to do more things in nature. Nature is just so important. And, and we know that in Sweden, and we know that it also um, gives creativity. In, in India, we're, we're born with creativity. And I say we, because I feel half Indian having spent 13 years there. But, but when we spend even more time in nature, uh, it gives even you know, more of that, this whole work-life balance that we also have in Sweden, which is you know, eight hours of um, work and eight hours of sleep and eight hours of you know, spending time in nature and being with family it also really gives a boost of creativity. So um, this creative aspect is in India and Sweden. And if we do things and learn from each other, uh, we can really make an impact on, on so many different things. I'm going mm-hmm. to come back to Michael. Thank you so much. Um, but first, I wanted to, to have um, Philippa say a few words. Of course, you are the creative director for uh, Stockholm Culture Festival. And as we mentioned earlier, in 2017, you had India as a theme for five days uh, with hundreds and thousands of people, so visitors. But now it's, it is a, a very tough time for your organization, for your people. Um, but, but I wanted still to look you know, and see a light in the end of the tunnel. And I do know that you have that. Um, for others who might be listening in as well, who might be challenged uh, with the same situation as you are, um, give us some hope and give us something to look forward to. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, just short about the festival. Uh, Uh, We've been doing this festival for 16 years. Uh, It's a festival produced by the city of Stockholm. It's an outdoor festival. And the most important thing is that it's free for everyone. So everybody is welcome. And we are in the city in the middle of of Stockholm doing this festival um, with music, arts, circus, and all kinds of different arts expressions. Uh, Yeah, this year, of course, we had to cancel the festival. Uh, So now the challenge is to find new ways of doing live experience. Uh, It's really important um, to consume consume, uh, culture and art, as well as traveling and meeting other people. Um, So what we're doing now is, of course, to look at different plans to see if we can make a festival happen, but in a d- different kind of format. Uh, and I think we will manage that, of course, because it's, um, it's such an important thing to do to also get people together. Um, yeah, so uh, we will do something in August uh, this uh, summer, but we will still be working on what that will be. We are very lucky in in Sweden and Stockholm that we don't have totally lockdowns, um, so we can still meet, but in in smaller groups. So that's what we're aiming to do. Great. Well, we're looking very much forward to August 2021, and I know that you do a lot of activities also online in terms of uh, interesting events. So so I, I think everyone should be aware of the fact that if you want to get inspiration or learn more about what's happening in the culture aspect in, in Stockholm, then you should uh, definitely check out Stockholm Culture Festival. Um, I'm going to come back to you uh, again, uh, Philippa. But for that, uh, I wanted Salgio uh, welcome uh, back uh, on stage. Um, you have spoken a lot about the importance in Stockholm of the openness and, and the, the creative part and the sustainable aspect. Of course, we saw you know, some great images and everyone who's not in Stockholm are you know, very much looking forward to, to come to the city where we are uh, both today, even though in two different locations. Tell us a little bit, you came to Stockholm in 1996 
and, and you live here, you run India Limited and, and you work with Visit Sweden, um, you live and breathe in this environment. Uh, why would you suggest and why would you say that Stockholm is the city where you are now very much based uh, for a very long time and why you believe creativity is flourishing uh, in, in, this, uh, in this capital of Scandinavia? So yeah, thanks, Cecilia. I thought um, it's important to uh, take off a little bit from what the other uh, others have discussed, like Bandana and, and, and so on. I think the carbon footprint is an important part, absolutely. It uh, comes under the sort of environmental sustainability. Uh, for me, it's really important that that is also balanced with social sustainability, which also means that uh, we, we need to make sure that uh, there's inclusion and diversity that everybody it belongs and is also showcased in the city. So one of the reasons why I thought, I mean, why I found Stockholm to be very interesting because is that on the social diversity part, apart from the, let's say, the environmental diversity, I mean, the sustainability, which has to do much more with lowering the carbon footprint, um, using using greener forms of transportation. Uh, if you're staying in a hotel, the hotel should have great best practices when it comes to reducing the carbon footprint in terms of like you don't re reuse the towels. You, I mean, you know, you have to do a number of things. Each uh, service provider has to think in a different way. Uh, how do we do packaging when it comes to food, everything, you know, but also what you eat and who is producing it. Do you have, do you know where it's coming from? So that's one part of it. The other part is very much about, do I feel included? You know, I, I'm, I mean, uh, as I, I brought the example of the LGBTQ uh, plus people, you know, they're not welcome everywhere, but we know that in Stockholm you have they, we are we welcome everybody irrespective of who you are, and you can come here and really thrive in this city. But also, I want to talk about the diversity of the different uh, people of Stockholm. Uh, I think it's more than I've, I could be wrong, Philippa, but it could be at least ten percent of the people who live in Stockholm come from other countries. Um, and this kind of diversity is very important to also bring up, uh, especially in a world where we see that they are more divisive forces, you know, but here, you know, a city that promotes diversity and inclusion is very important. And that is showcased, for example, in the a variety of food that's available in Stockholm. We have food from all over the world. It's a real melting pot. So it um, when Stockholm, uh, culture festival celebrates India, they are also celebrating the diversity of the people living in the city, not only as a way for us, for them to be introduced to a completely different culture and celebrate it. That to me, that's a, this social sustainability is a really important part. It's a similar to what Bandana talked about. Yes, that you're giving back to the local community. There are different ways to give back. You can create different kind of circular concepts. Uh, these were a couple of those thoughts and ideas which I feel that Stockholm really has. Uh, so I haven't sort of gone back to my own background here, but um, this is, these are some of the things that I have learned and seen. And I feel uh, that's why it's such a vibrant city. And it's naturally set with nature, which is extremely close. Uh, so I don't know if I've made the point you wanted me to make, Cecilia, or do I need to add something more to this? I mean, and I would say so, and I think you are uh, born in Calcutta. Um, yeah. <laughs> Stockholm, your home, and uh, um, and there are so many reasons to it, and and uh, you know, Stockholm, uh, you you're a part of Stockholm, and that's how yeah. Stockholm, we're you know we're welcoming, we we uh, we, we we love uh, you know having Sanju here, and we're very open to. Any uh, people from any part of the world, ten percent are, are I'll say, actually immigrants, and and yeah. uh, and uh, you know the more the merrier. We're very open, and also easy for for people to come from outside of Sweden to be in Sweden because everyone speaks English. So you know, for yes. a very easy environment to to work and to travel in. Um, so that's also one thing that we think. one thing great about Stockholmers is that. They love Indian food. They love yoga. So there are, you know, a couple of these are great touch points for us, you know, I mean, coming from India. 
here and uh, I came here to study at Stockholm University International Business mm -hmm. uh, and then I worked within sort of different companies and 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 so on um, so that experience uh, I mean I'm just a marketing guy but even I have a patent that Ericsson bought but I'm just telling you I'm no technical person no nothing and I'm just saying this city has something creative you know and I mean it gives you an opportunity to breathe and find a space and find that mind space. People go to India to find themselves. I came to Sweden to find myself. So what I'm trying to say is that, you know, you can, that it can go both ways. You can find this deep peace, this deep rest, which I think only a for the Swedish forest can give you because it's also very safe. There's no dangerous things around here. You know, this forest is safe in every level. When my dad came and we took him for a walk in the forest, he was like, oh, should I be worried about like have the socks all the way up so there's no creepy crawlies coming up? But nothing of that sort. The Sweden is so safe. So that's yeah. also an extremely important part of that experience I think you can get. Yeah. So I, I think, uh, I mean, uh, don't flip the cone, cone, cone a little bit because, of course, you know, I love Sweden. I love Stockholm. I'm here today. But the main reason why I'm here today is actually because I can't go back to, to where I live in India. I um, feel that Sweden is, of course, amazing with the nature and everything. But for me, India was a place where I want to go. And I felt so welcomed in India. The of course. The, 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 the different natures, the variety of, of nature, the mountains, the beach, the, the jungles, the, the everything. So um, I would also say that people who might be listening in from, from you know, other parts of the world who haven't been to India, Yes, Sweden is amazing. Uh, do visit one day. But India also has so much to offer. And I do hope, um, and I've said it before, that India will learn from the activities that we do in Sweden, uh, open up nature more, be more sustainable, allow people, uh, and also become, you know, ensure that it's a safe country to travel in because uh, then, then there's also so much more that can be done in, in India. Can I, I just add? To your comment that you know they are beautiful places in India and you have the northeastern part um, you have uh, Goa you have Kerala you know uh, the the Himalayan region and and so on there are many beautiful uh, spots very much I mean the nature is extremely strong very powerful no no different I mean the theme today was creative cities so of course they an experience which can combine both, but also a city that is becoming, you know, also create, giving you a platform for sustainability to be coming in, for in, in both social, but also to offset the carbon footprint is really, is going to be the city of the future. And I think this is the, this is, it is about this, about how can you build, put this together? And, and that's important. And we, the creative leads from, from different, uh, minds need to come together to push this agenda of sustainable and, tourism. And that's why that, uh, that uh, who will get inspired. Uh, one person, of course, who uh, inspires me in many ways is Bandana. We met in India, but we also spent time in Stockholm together, and so we did in Bali. Um, you are a citizen of the world. Uh, you mentioned earlier about you know the importance when it comes to travel in, in the sustainable space but just just tell us a little bit about your journey you're in bali today if you are looking at doing something now in the future uh travel would it be back to india sweden what is important for you could you could you leave us with a few uh food for thoughts um that that, that would be sure. nice. Sure. I mean, I'm, I'm speaking, keeping very much in mind uh, a COVID a reality. And I, I truly believe that we won't be traveling as much as we did before. Sometimes I'm horrified when I look at my itinerary before COVID, uh, the, the, the luxury of being in a different country every month, but dipping into it for three days and four days and then dipping out and sort of boasting to your friends that guess what, you know, in one month I've been in five countries when the fact of the matter is that I hardly immersed myself in the culture. Mm. I hardly understood what it was to participate in some a, a culture that was not my own, to understand enough to give back to a community as a human being 
um, uh, not just as a tourist who's pillaging all the time. This is not just about taking and taking, but it's also about giving. And so now with, with COVID times, I think about very personally, how am I going to travel? And that's the only reason I can come onto forums like this because I'm talking about personal change, which will have, mm. if we believe in a collective, then we'll have social impact. So I believe living in Bali, having been um, in India all my life, I'm Nepalese by birth. I've been to Stockholm, which is beautiful. All these beautiful touch point creative cities. I do not ever want to travel to any city or village or countryside without knowing A, what my footprint is, B, by not giving back to the community. I can't just be an observer. Uh, I need to be a participant. And this is extremely important when we talk about Indian tourism, when you talk about tourism, especially in Asian countries or developing mm. nations, right? Stockholm is blessed with a small population. Your government looks after you. You know, there's so many things that you don't have to worry about as Sweden as a country that a lot of the other countries have to worry about. So when you come to our part of the world, so to speak, then it is imperative that, you know, we put our hand out to help not necessarily in terms of charity, but in terms of participating in a humanitarian level, that we do buy from the communities that you've come to visit, that we participate in the cultural experiences that are unique to the land, respect them for it, and engage in the way perhaps we haven't engaged before, because we've all been travelers, and we were like literally one foot here and one foot there. And what did we give back? What did we understand about the woes of the villagers? I lived in Bali, right behind my house, they're paddy fields and they're farmers who are struggling because of climate change, farmers struggling because they have GMO seeds that have to be grown faster instead of two crops, they're growing, growing four crops. So tourism has a lot to take into account what we are eating, what we are supporting, what cultural immersion that you want, what kind of things we are buying? I'm from the fashion industry. How can you come to, imagine if you're in India or I'm in Stockholm, Sweden has its own textile heritage, just as mm. India does, just as Indonesia does. So do I then go to a fast fashion company and buy the same damn t-shirt that I can buy in Jakarta, in Tokyo, in Bombay, in mm. Stockholm, or do I buy something that's unique to the culture that I've visited? that supports the local community. So our buying, our eating, our social impact participation, our giving back to a community is, I think, going to define how we travel tomorrow. Thank you so much uh, for that input. Yes, applause from Sanju. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, I'm sure there were, you know, all of us uh, listening and also here on the panels uh, uh, get inspired by, by what you're saying there. I would want to, uh, you know, move on actually to then Philippe. I just, I think it, I, I do uh, have some memory of uh, Stockholm Culture Festival being one of the most sustainable festivals also in the world. I know that you do so much in this space. And I think, you know, having so many people coming to your festival and, and touching on so many uh, people's mindsets and, and, and also inspiring and educating. Tell us a little bit about the sustainable activities that you've done around Stockholm Culture Festival and what we can look forward to um, when we visit the next one. Well, yeah, we do. I mean, it's a, it's a part of our everyday work to work with sustainability. Uh, we are uh, working with transportation, taking care of the trash, uh, recycling things. Um, that's not new in Sweden anymore. It's what we always do. But I would like to connect a bit uh, to what Sanyu said. It's a lot about the social sustainability because we have so many people in Stockholm from different countries um, and we want them to meet. So it's a lot of the social aspect of making a festival. It's in the city center where everybody is allowed to be. It's easy, accessible. Um, and when you experience culture together with someone else that you don't know. You create a bond and you also create a story of a city. So uh, that, that's our main task to actually 
give this cultural experience to all Stockholmers, but also to tourists, of course. We have a lot of tourists coming. Um, so that's what we're working with, also doing the programmation for everyone, for, for with international artists, with uh, things for children, elderly people, everything is really accessible. So uh, that's, I think that is really important for culture to, to actually be that uh, in the front line of this work. Mm. Great, yes, I agree. I mean, I've been to, as I live in India, I haven't had the opportunity to come to too many of the culture festivals, but I did go to the one that had an India theme in 2017. And I was very, very impressed by all the work that you do. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, we have a few questions, but first, uh, one last for you, um, Michael. Um, I think it's, um, you know, just to, to, to look at what all we have said, and I know that you were from the beginning are very responsible in your communication with the audience. You mentioned uh, a little bit more about also how people are traveling more locally and, and, and agri-tourism has become something that people are also doing more and more, in particular in India. Can you just mention a few of the, of the cities? Because I find it very interesting. When I come back to India, I look forward to, to go to some of these places. So are there anyone in particular that have been coming up that you think are very interesting and exciting to, to highlight? So Maharashtra in India, which is Bombay, the main city is Bombay. Uh, so Maharashtra has been sort of the pioneer in terms of agri-tourism. Uh, mm. Even though the base is very, very small, it's been growing at about 20% year on year. Uh, this essentially involves uh, farm stays that have, been, have recently uh, cropped up in uh, Maharashtra, in Rajasthan. Uh, and lots of these farm stays have now been started by people who, like, you know, in their early 30s, who are aware of the carbon footprint, who are aware of what impact uh, they are having on, uh, uh, who want to create an impact uh, in these small local communities. And it involves them, and it's not a highly uh, commercialized uh, sort of uh, run organization or initiative. It's mm -hmm. more around, uh, I mean, in, if you look at how they, they, their communication, their marketing, it's all word of mouth. They mm -hmm. try to encourage uh, people, like fewer people to come in, but spend a, a long period of time as opposed to people coming and going. So if you look at the average stay that people do, it's around 15 days, minimum of about 15 days to about 30 days. So where people like Bandana said, you can really immerse into your uh, into the local community and understand the experiences that, uh, and you go away with uh, culturally en enriched uh, that's great. And I think that's also why, you know, some of these uh, agri farms and these places around the world, they might not have, uh, you know, the budget either to market themselves. Um, and, and the manpower or the strength or the bandwidth, and that's where it's just so important to, to work with communities like Tripolo, work more with word of mouth and ensure that they have, um, you know, that uniqueness in their communication. In fact, I have an employee of ours, ex-employee of ours, who started a uh, agri a farm stay uh, in Uttarakhand in India. Mm -hmm. And the way they're building it is piece by piece. It's not like a hotel where they have a launch and you know everything's up and perfect. Uh, they're building it piece by piece, right? Year by year. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, year one they have a few gadgets in place. Like right now, I mean, this year they were actually. Uh, building that they had their oven and microwave for the first time, right? So it takes time for them and they want to build it sustainably. Uh, they think of the impact of, and even the audience that comes to them uh, mm. would probably not want a, a microwave. Mm. Uh, so you, they think about a lot of these things before they actually buy or purchase them. They understand their audience really, really well, uh, mm. but they need to balance again, convenience versus uh, sustainability. So it's, these projects are more long term, take five, I mean, I feel like they take five to years or a decade to build, as opposed to uh, having a grand opening and uh, letting guests come in. That's fantastic. That's a great story. It leads me to, to, uh, to what we do in Sweden also in terms of really encouraging uh, and, and inclusiveness uh, in terms of people traveling around the, the country. Uh, and, you know, being able to then find these 
uh, small places that they might not have heard of before. One reason to why we're so open in Sweden is something called Allemansrätten. And there is a question also from the audience, and I thought, Sandju, could you tell us a little bit more about Allemansrätten and, and you know, how maybe India can get inspiration from that as well, because that could really help these different organizations and farms around the country. So yeah, in Sweden, we have a law which is called the freedom to roam. And you are free to roam uh, basically anywhere, set up your camp anywhere. Uh, as long as, uh, let's say, you're not in the front yard of somebody's home, like in the private garden, uh, that, I mean, some of them we might allow it, but they might not appreciate that you're, you're camping in their garden. Uh, because there is a lot of space here. We we are a country, you know, with 97% is um, not habited. And it is uh, the third largest country in Europe, size-wise. So it's we're talking about a large amount of space. And 70% is covered by, still with forests and lakes, you know, which is not touched. So there is enough space for you to go around and do this. Uh, because we have the space, I think we have this law uh, which allows you that you have the right to go and put up a camp or sleep by the water or do whatever. So there are no restrictions. And I think that's a fantastic part of could be a good way to also experience when the time is right. I just want to add one more point to what Bandana has been talking about. Like, yeah, if you do make a plan to visit Sweden, come here for a more in-depth uh, time, you know, don't come for two days or three days. That's not sustainable. Come at least for a week or 10 days and actually dive into the culture. Uh, Swedes might look shy in the beginning, but if you approach them, they really open up and they're very warm uh, and they want to be very helpful, you know. That's, that's very true. Mm. Well, it is very true. And we have that in uh, both Sweden and India, that warm hospitality to, 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 to you know, to, to quite a large extent. Yeah. There's a question more. We have quite a few questions coming in from the audience now, and I'm happy to see that because uh, that means that we have, you know, we've uh, barked something here. But we only have three minutes left. So I'm going to um, post this question. I think I'm going to take this back to, um, I think, Vandana, because you lived in India, and I think... Um, you know, this is, might not be your area of expertise, but you travel so much there. And, and I know that you, you know, with your sustainability hat, do think about the locations also in India that you go to. It says uh, here from Praveen Mayakar, seeing that India is a large country with a lot of cultural and natural diversity. Is there a list of specific, or just give me one specific or two maybe, destinations where sustainable and climate aware travel is focused on and, and, you know, is this something where you feel one could be inspired from, from the activities uh, that we have um, in Sweden? I mean, you've been to Sweden, you've been to India. Can you see some link there and come with a recommendation maybe to someone that you want to uh, give a word? Of course, I could go on, on, on and on with recommendations between the two countries. But those are things you can Google and I don't want to waste this incredible opportunity to be able to tell you, the wonderful person who asked the question, that while you are looking for places, whether it's in Sweden or in India, which has a sort of a sustainability consciousness and you feel good to go into these places, A, you've got a smartphone in your hand, please research. B, wherever you are next to nature, you know that the people who live there value nature. It is very difficult to go to a farm and see farmers who rely on their crops, the season, the water supply, the seed supply. They are so beholden to nature, they will be looking after nature in the way you and I who've been living in cities. I lived in Bombay for almost 15 years. We did not care enough about. So choosing a destination, whether it is in Sweden or in India, is a personal quest for you to find spots where you are going to be taught the bounty of nature, where you will naturally be a sustainable human being because you are driven to those places where actually people live like that. We may forget because we lived in big 
metropolitan cities in India where the population is anything between 15 to 20 million people. So we forget how disconnected we've been with nature, but you just have to travel a few kilometers outside big cities and you go to the heart of nature and you see how people really live. And most of the times if they're in nature, they have no other choice but to live sustainably. Now, Sweden has made an art form out of living sustainably, whether you're in an urban center or you go into the countryside. But I think the choice as travelers, as human beings, as individuals, we need to now promote, we need now to spend our hard earned money, which we are going to be very careful about during COVID times to spend in places that respect the environment and your intention to respect the environment too. So I think this forum is wonderful because you know both countries can learn from practices and we as mm. customers, as consumers, as yeah. travelers can benefit from both sides uh, quite equally. Sandy, yes. I just want to add to that, Bandana. You know, if Sweden does whatever it does uh, when it comes to sustainability, it won't help if if India also... I mean, we, the thing with sustainability is it has to become a global thing. It's no point that one part of the earth does and the other doesn't. So we are in this together. We have to share the responsibility together and we must share the best practices also. So in the sense that these forums are important for sharing knowledge, but also, you know, this is, of course, on a high level and we need to maybe even go deeper down and create, you know, those type of platforms where we can actually see how, how these two minds, areas or regions can work together and, and come up with great ideas for each other. I think that should be an idea, too. I'm all for the sort of open source collaboration yeah. between countries, policymakers, government yeah. officials. Those are levels that I can't even aspire to reach because I'm not part of the government yeah. policymakers, right? So my call to action is very individualistic. And this comes from what Mahatma Gandhi has preached through the, the, you know, the years that he lived fighting for independence, fighting for the environment, fighting for social justice. And it all boils down to individual action that le leads to collective change therefore leads to social impact. So mm -hmm. I, as much as I admire great governments that are into environmental policies, we need to take uh, personal responsibility ourselves. When I travel, what are the things I can do to travel sustainably? What are the choices? Where do I go? Why do I go, go there? So those are personal choices. So let's not leave it to this larger amorphous system that we really can't tap into all the time but I can tap into my own change. I can tap into my own personal intentions and the choices that I make with the money that I earn. So I think that is a very, for me personally, it changed my life personally. So I, I feel that I need to share that. Please don't undermine any sustainable practice that you want to imbibe. The change has to come from within you. As Gandhi said, be the change you want to see in the world. And it applies beautifully to sustainable travel too. It really does. Uh, I think that was a great way to, to end this session. Um, I'm so happy uh, and privileged to, to be part of Sweden India Business Council, where I have the opportunity to bring amazing people like you together and, and speak to, to, to such a broad audience. I can see people listening in both from India, Sweden, the US uh, and other parts of the world as well. So I hope that we have uh, through this seminar today inspired um, people uh, to live their best self um, on a personal note when traveling and um, you know any part uh, of the day and um, I would like to thank Visit Sweden of course to to have been part of putting this webinar together of course our media partner economic Times Travel World, uh, all you amazing speaker, Bandana, Michael, Philippa, uh, Sanjo. Um, this has been great. Uh, when I travel again, um, we also have a, a partnership with Emirates and I know that they're very much into you know, the safety aspect and they take very much care of their customers. So I would also recommend if you do choose to travel 
uh, when you have put all your thoughts together on why you're traveling and where and how you can give back to community, uh, then Emirates is, uh, is an airline to look at. Um, I also want to uh, thank all the listeners that have listened in today. Um, if there are any more questions that you have, please share them with me and I'll try to get the, the answers, of course, from the, the amazing panelists or I'll answer them uh, as much as I can myself. Uh, we're probably going to have, looking at the interest and looking at what we can do together, a uh, third uh, travel uh, session, the future of travel with a different topic. And um, I will tell you more about that when it happens. Before that, you can all join us at India Sweden Innovation Day, which is on the 27th of November, where we will be talking again about opportunities to change the world and opportunities in the Sweden India business corridor. We have some amazing speakers. We have India Unlimited uh, amongst others with Sanju Malutra um, uh, behind the scenes and you know organizing this very, very interesting event. And this has been an event before where you could come you know, of course, attend in person, but it's going to be online this year, which means that you have an opportunity to listen in and partake in this um, Innovation Day from wherever you might be in the world. So block the date, 27th of um, September, and some of you can listen. November. <laughs> at the, at the November. So really looking forward to that. So did you want to say something more about that Innovation Day in particular? Um, yes, uh, it's it's a day where we will uh, basically look at innovation also from the angle of sustainability and uh, looking at uh, specific uh, areas which include uh, energy, uh, transportation, um, uh, looking at uh, AI and digitalization. There is the civil security, the India-Sweden Innovation Partnership. Um, so these are, of course, some of the areas uh, that we will be looking into, but also SDG, SDG goals and climate action is very much part of it. The two climate ministers will be meeting, uh, will also be part of it. So a very exciting day, full of content. And don't let's not forget the startups, you know, the ones who will be the future change makers and, and um, are working already on social impact. So, yes, uh, that's it in short. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you. 7th of November. And for now, thank you, uh, all panelists. Thank you, audience. Um, and thank you, everyone. And looking forward to seeing you online or seeing you somewhere uh, in the not too distant future. Thank you once again. Namaste. Thank you. Namaste. So much. <laughs>